is the name of Alien's animal Lurker Taigetan? No, it's a name given by humans from the Alien movies, possibly from James Cameron. It has many names here, but I don't know how to write them. Essentially, it is called Bug or Nefarious Insectoid Bug. Is it the same as the one in the movies? I think you said that it did not have a human body, but a kind of insect body. Does it also have two mouths? The body, the tail and the claws are from the same animal. What changes is that it is too humanoid in the movie. But keep in mind that in the movie it is supposed to take the bodily form of the host from which it came. So, it's a justification for the movie to make it look humanoid. Okay, valid in the cinema. But up here it's always the same back, with an insectoid body. The head is correct, with everything, and a double set of teeth. Clothes, tail, and general color also good. The blood acid thing, partly correct. And the correct color, although all black would also be correct. I've never seen one up close, only in computer data. Another thing is that there are thousands and thousands of species of variants of that creature and of various sizes, all scattered on planets that are usually quite hostile to life as we see it or need it ourselves. Do you know anyone who has seen one up close or some story like that of facing one? No, we know that they exist and that they are quite common and a constant danger, but here no one has told me, nor it is said that they have been seen here. And the body of an insect. What kind of insect? It is very thin, but not that long. Same with multiple legs, not just two or four. They do not usually have an insect abdomen, but some species do or queens, if they have it. In themselves, they are classified as that, insectoids. Are there any insects here that have a similar body? Yes, arachnids of the flat type. Would the body be like this spider? Yes, only longer, without protruding abdomens, only queens. And how does it get around? Like a quadruped? Yes, as a quadruped or as a multipedal. They do not walk on two legs. And the tail? How is it? Like in the movies, long with segments and a spike as a weapon at the tip. And they also use it a lot. And, like in the movies, extremely smart for their purposes. Close on its legs, the one with four legs is the one that most resembles the one in the cinema. And segmented body, with natural exoskeleton. How big is the lurker or the nefarious insectoid bug? They exist in all sizes, even very small but the one that most closely resembles the one in the movie can be around 10 feet tall if it stands on its back legs. All highly carnivorous. So it's like a scorpion, right? Yes, but the scorpion has a different shape at the front. And the shape or relationship between the dimension of its body changes a bit. But yes, you're right. It could be related to scorpions, which I understand are also arachnids. Thank you, I understand. And another question about the lurker. How is it about acid blood? I think it has acid saliva in the movie too. I don't have corroborating information about the saliva, but the blood is acidic, very acidic but I think it is not as acidic as in the movie. I cannot confirm. I do not have the data now. 
but they focus on their dangerousness more towards their abilities to bite, scratch, and solve problems. They are known to have extraordinary strength like any good insect. And how do they reproduce? Is it like in the movie? Do they also need a host? Like in the movie, yes. And they devastate entire places of fauna for that reason and for food. They destroy the ecosystems and then go into torpor waiting for more victims to come to them and they can stay that way almost indefinitely. Horrible, I know. In space, there is everything, from beings of light of very high densities that do not need ships and that only appear as someone to interact with other people of levels below, to even the most dire creatures of low evolutionary level you can imagine, and everything in between. And what planet or planets does it originate from? It is not known. They are a very ancient species and are everywhere OG supports. And, as in the film, great efforts are made to prevent their spread and contamination to planets that do not have them. Not only because of this, but also because of predators in general, Erra and Temer can be very vulnerable ecosystems to the introduction of alien species. The animals don't know about predators in many places. For example, in Temer, countless species of birds nest directly on the ground, both in forests and on beaches or among reeds and plants on the shores of lakes. Of course, I understand, they are a threat to any ecosystem. Yes, but, for example, we cannot introduce predator species to these vulnerable ecosystems, even if they are not like this, that is, a dog, for example. The domestic cat is already integrated into most of these ecosystems in Erra and Temer. Domestic cats tend to leave birds and their chicks of certain species alone. Although in theory they could eat them, it seems that they are even afraid of them. And what planets or what type of climate or biology is suitable for these animals? Lurker adapts to any climate, any extreme condition, but they are known to be more abundant in very hot and humid places or planets. How tough! And is this animal carbon-based or silicon-based? It seems that I understood that it was silicon, but according to the last thing they told me recently, it is a hybrid of the best of both worlds. That's why it eats meat. If it did not have a carbon element, they could not eat meat. That makes it even more dangerous, because it adapts to any condition and diet. In addition, its skeleton protects it as an armor. I didn't know that silicon-based animals couldn't eat meat. Yes, it's that carbon nourishes carbon and silicon nourishes silicon. It is basically mineral. It is useless to eat meat if it does not nourish a silicon body. That does not mean that it is not dangerous or also kills a silicon-based animal. But this one is in between the two worlds. Thanks, how interesting. And how is a silicon animal? What characteristics does it have? How are carbon-based different from silicon-based? Silicon-based ones are very insectoid in appearance. That's a constant with silicon ones, also using exoskeleton. Regarding the silicon and carbon hybridation, I am sure that the silicon part is concentrated in the exoskeleton armor and other parts such as teeth, with a carbon interior and organs. Thank you, Aneka. How interesting. And how does the Cabal have so much information about this animal? 
It is one of the animals outside Earth best known for its high danger. This kind of information is held by the Cabal because monopolizes ancient texts that are from Atlantis or earlier. This is known because they took the library of Alexandria, among others, burning only the copies. Even the books that are antagonistic to them, that contradict them, take copies of them and put them under the Vatican, because information is power. They are not going to destroy something that can then be used for planetary control. Or in case another copy comes out that they have not yet destroyed and want to see what it contains. And it is also known that they have never stopped communicating with races of the Federation throughout the centuries. That is, deep secret societies have always had contact with beings from other worlds. The world does not work as you are told. So the Lurker has never been on Earth, has it? Not that I know of. Did you learn about this bug at the Academy? Yes, it is essential to know about this bug. Identify it and not interact with it in any way. Also, a long list of troublesome species that are on various worlds. Not just this nefarious bug. Plants included. Is this the top one in dangerousness? Or are there others above? In its class is 10 out of 10 dangerous. I say in its class because there are others who are like internal parasites that eat the victim from the inside and are difficult to detect, for example. That's 10 out of 10 too, but of a different kind. Some can be mimicked with shapes of the same organs, passing through tissue of the same body, as fat cells or as cysts. So even with equipment, you don't detect them just because you see the effects and symptoms. It is said that it is as if they go to another density so as not to be detected and they return to yours to eat you inside and then go to the other density again. How can one get rid of this? What a nefarious energetic larva. And in this case, how do you remove them? By medical pot only. It is the safest way. Only your biology remains. And it handles frequencies too, so it handles or cleans your etheric implants if necessary. The thing is that you feed them with your thoughts, being or remaining as compatible with your frequencies. So those bugs adhere to your aura and from there they drain your energy. But if you are in suspended animation in the medical pod, your thoughts are very high density, while you are in recovery, in dreams. And the energetic larva comes off because you are no longer interesting to them. But those are the energetic ones that are common in 3D, being 4D beings. In 5D there are still some, but not so many. They are just interdimensional animals and parasites. They consume your vital energy. The point is that some do consume your physical body from the inside like a normal parasite, but very strongly. They end up or may end up killing the host due to internal bleeding and organ failure for multiple reasons. It's horrible, but very interesting this about the medbot. Yes, that's why the medical pot is the most used instrument in health matters here, because of its multifunctional capacity and because they are very safe. In many cases, the healing process can be interrupted at any point, and without complications. But not in all cases it can be interrupted, of course. For example, in the case of a restoration or regeneration of a lost or amputated limb, the process cannot be stopped midway or progress would be lost. Aha, uh -huh, I understand. The bots are very needed here. I know. 